I'm gonna pick the game I like. Alright, here we go. Um, you've probably recently seen that a streamer, uh, guessed that by the name of Dark Twinge, um, plays a variety of games. Um, one of that variety he played, um, is this tessellated instruction set, TIS-100. I think on one of these, uh, stages he did manage to beat my score. And I'm gonna see... Uh, nope. All right, let me observe whether or not um, I, I can find the level in which he beat my score. Oh, I could just click on a level to see how it went. Nice. Well, that's not so hard now, is it? Um, so, scroll this down so I can see. So there I am, cycle count, cycle count, instruction count, node count, and stuff. On the top of the list there, and there, and there, and there, and there. All right, here uh, my cycle count has been beaten on sequence counter. Is it just sequence counter? Um, at least of the ones that I've cleared. Yeah, I've only been defeated on sequence counter. Now, I did have the privilege of watching um, his achievement, but I want to see just what's the most efficient solution that I can muster. Um, so I see my two circuit boards up here say 358 and 350 cycles. Uh, I was nowhere in the vicinity of this 329, and I don't have any idea how I achieved it. And while I did, in some sense, watch uh, the coding of, um, or the solution for this circuit, I don't know that I could replicate what I observed. Read a sequence from in, write the sum to out.s, write the length to out.l. All right. Um, so the easiest solution to this um, would be to do just assume that everything. Uh, just to clarify, this is an incorrect solution, but the easy solution is just move the ins move the values down, and some of the time you'll get it right. Um, most of the time you won't. So that's the easy solution. It allows you to observe um, just, well, how close you were. Um, and um, look for opportunities for optimization and such. Um, now if I want to do this in the fewest cycles possible, I want to... I don't even know. Um, move act down, move act right, move left into accumulator. Uh, um, mm -hmm. Actually, no. We're going to do all the... Well, no, let's do all the work up here. Accumulator, and then eventually we're just going to say move up, down, um, and then move up, down. And we'll say... Uh, start is this. Jump. Uh, greater than zero, back to start. Um, 
No, we need to increment with each um, read. So we need to add one, move left to the cum. Well, no. Swap. Move left to the cum. Uh, yeah, no, this is correct. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. Instruction one needs to be swap. That's how it is that we're going to manage to. Um, so swap takes the values in accumulator and backup register and flips them. Um, we move the value from left into the accumulator. If it's greater than zero, go back to the start. Otherwise, move the accumulator down. Uh, move zero into accumulator and repeat everything. So this will get a correct count of the number of elements. Um, assuming I'm not awful at this. It's a big assumption. So how did that fail? That was weird. Oh, right. So, yeah, if I need to move the backup register value to the end, I need to push that down. Um, zero back into the... Okay, this should... <laughs> There's still an off by one bias somewhere. Um, so... What this needs to do is say subtract one, um, rather move negative one into accumulator, add up, and then move accumulator down, and then it'll address our off by one issue. Now we've still exhausted our input sequence there. Um, so I need to think about how it is that I'm going to detect the end of a sequence. So I put a lot of heavy logic over here. I think here's where I'm going to put the rest of my logic. Um, it's going to do something quite similar to this block. So instead of adding one with each operation, Um, instead of moving left into the accumulator, I'm just going to move up into the accumulator. Um, oh, okay, I see the challenge here. I see the challenge here. So the first instruction is always going to be just add up and then up into the then we need to swap and go back to the start, which means something more like this. Okay. And then yeah, if we're greater than zero, go back to the start. Else, print out the value and reset the counter. So there we go. Really simple counter. Now, how... Okay, so I got this in 319 cycles. Uh, that's also in 319. Now, can I beat 319? 311. Random test is probably also 319 or something. All right, so somehow Dark Twinge got this in 287 cycles, probably by distributing the logic across more cells. Um, huh? How could I? How could I do something faster? 
I mean, this is pretty fast. Well, as I'm reading the inputs, I could check if they're zero. And if so, send like some kind of special sequence to the other cells to indicate what they should be doing. That's, yeah, let me try it that way. Let's erase this and try this again from scratch. Um, so we're going to first back up the input value. Um, oh, check this out. Um, move one into the accumulator, and then add up. That's what I want to say. And then jump relative to off. No, that doesn't work. No, 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 that's too fancy. Uh, we're just going to move the value into the accumulator. Um, and then say if it's... Um, okay, yeah, jump greater than zero. Um, I don't know, let's say label J. I'll put label J down here. Move one down. One is going to be our indicator that we need to add. Um, and then move. Let's see. Oh, actually, yeah, we don't need to have multiple um, targets down here. Uh, let's see, we got targets J, K, and L. Um, let's move zero down, jump unconditionally to K. All right, so you either move to zero or a one down. And then we've, I mean, that's it. And then this down here can say move up into accumulator, move accumulator down, and move accumulator to the right. Okay. So that's just going to repeat this and split it into two data streams. Um, so this section of the data oh hang on so i can say like jro up and then figure out what numbers i want to propagate across the system um okay so my instructions are either going to be add up and go back to the beginning. Or um, it's going to be print out the value that's in the register move accumulator down. Okay. That'll work just fine. Move left down and then down here. Jump relative to offset up. Um, add one. Oh, and this is, I have to say, move uh, zero into accumulator. As will this. Um, 
Okay, so our jump offsets are not going to be 0 and 1, but they're going to be 2 and 3, and I need to make sure I don't get this backwards. Um, so for greater than... Um, actually, my, ups, my offsets aren't 2 and 3, are they? They're 1 and 3. We have a zero, then we print out a one. Else we print out a three. There we go. Oh, we got an off by one error. This is not resetting properly. We got an off by one error on the first iteration. How did I get an off by one error on the counter? I mean, this seems pretty simple, right? Um, so we say three. Three gets sent up down to the right. This just says add one. The next value that gets sent over the wire, move left down. So it's reading a value, writing a value. Yeah, it's actually just transmitting without even looking. So the value that's being sent is a 1. Oh, hang on. This is not consuming an input. Um, yeah, this needs to consume every other input here. Which is not hard. Um, move left to nil. Then at least our count should be accurate. Um, still got an off by one error here. That's easily addressed. We say instead of move zero there, move a plus one there. Alright, so I've increased my cycle count to 392, which is not a personal best. Um, I need to do much better if I'm going to beat Twinges record, but how do I do that? I thought using this jump relative to offset was super clever, but it seems to have increased rather than decrease the cycle count. Um, So up here, how many instructions am I consuming per, um, I don't know. So I'm consuming five instructions um, per input. If I could improve that, um, that would help a lot. If nothing else, I could take this set of instructions and move it down. Take this set and move it over. I'm still going to consume five instructions per cycle. Um, here, let's take this, back it up over here, take this, put it there, take this, push that down. Okay. Oh, this branch on the right doesn't need anything special. That doesn't hurt. Um, yeah, fine, whatever. In fact, why don't I cut this out? Cut that out. Copy this over here. And then just say move left down. Alright, what's the performance of this? Well, it's incorrect for one thing. 
Um, not sure how. How is it that this did not yield the same numbers as the sequence that we saw a second ago? Um, I mean, certainly this processes the numbers in parallel, because now we're splitting it as early as possible and then having this logic in the middle. So this gets executed in parallel to that. But um, I still don't understand, like, why does it not yield the exact same result as very similar code that we had a second ago? Um, I don't need this complicated stuff anyway. Um, I can just write my own counter here. Swap. Oh, hang on. Hang on. Move left to accumulator. Move accumulator down and do that twice. All right. And then it doesn't matter how many times that repeats. Um, so each iteration is going to say swap, move. Oh, sorry. How's this going to work? At some point, we're going to add up. We need to swap the contents of both registers. Um, move up into the accumulator. Jump based on the value. Uh, which means that prior to this adding up, we need to do this. Um, Okay, and otherwise we do need to print out the value that's in the register. Uh, move accumulator down, move, <laughs> you can even say swap here, right? Or in fact, let the initial swap take care of that. Um, no. So that should accurately count uh, the number of elements. Uh, well, that's not accurate at all now, is it? Quite the opposite. Um, we don't need to move the value twice. Yep, we're off by one, guys. We are so off by one. Um, Two sixty three. Well, um, I don't understand how that dropped the cycle count so drastically. This is very similar to a program I thought I just had. I mean, sure, I took out the cycles from the right hand column. Like this five, like this six step thing that was feeding into a four step thing. I, I simplified all that. But, um, I'm still struggling to understand how this is faster than what we saw earlier. I don't get it. It could be that since this right-hand path in general is simpler, that um, the left path doesn't have to wait on sending inputs to the right as often. I don't know if that makes any sense, but... Um, could be that there's less waiting on the right hand side of the circuit because the left hand um, left hand is going to be complicated because we have to send this input twice um, but the right hand could be simple
You could probably simplify all this even further by just saying always send the accumulator down twice and send the accumulator to the right in between sending it down twice. That way this code down here could branch based on the initial sending of the value. And by branch I mean jump. And then um, after having jumped, uh, could check um, what's the value that was initially sent. That way we don't have to have something here sending or copying the value into the accumulator. Um, we'll just be able to jump and then check what the value is. I mean, that would mean one extra step up here, but mean fewer steps in the rest of this circuit. Regardless, it seems like um, this is pretty efficient on the right-hand side. So we swap, add one, swap, read the value from above, and then jump based on its value. Um, Yeah, this does keep, this is simpler in terms of jumping, because we're not jumping as much. Like, we had all these jump commands that were up here, or actually over here. Now all these jump commands are out. Uh, so all the jumps are now being done down here. So we're saving a good number of cycles. We're not jumping in one block and then jumping in another block and causing weights between jumps on each block. Or on each CPU. Um, that's pretty cool. So yeah, um, mission accomplished. Much earlier than expected. What do I do now? Part of why I'm hesitating is because I filled up my other two circuit or schematics um, uh, for this puzzle, and so I don't want to scrap any one of these three. They all did very well. Um, they all have plenty of original ideas. And while I could try to go for the in-game record, I think I understand in concept how I would do it, and it, in practice, um, it's such a marginal improvement over where I'm currently at, but what's the point? Let's just see this in action again. So yeah, on average, this does a lot of jumping back to the start, which is why, despite having eight instructions, uh, this is actually quite efficient. Um, So I could pause this for a second. You can see like this is idle 8%. This is idle often. This is idle pretty often. Um, this is idle 6%. So here's, that's like our bottleneck. Uh, this is working 92% of the time. This is working 94% of the time. So anything else introduced into this circuit that would slow it down would be a huge uh, slowdown. Which is why when I had a more difficult set of instructions here, you would see a high idle time on both um, chips. But here, this left column only has one um, very busy circuit, and this has only one very busy circuit. And so there's a low risk of um, multiple uh, circuits in the same path of execution. Um, causing a slowdown at different times. Um, in terms of pipelining, like it's great to split this out into what we do in the left column and the right column, because um, then these can operate independently and there's no um, one of these waiting on the other to finish sort of relationships. Um, so yeah, that's pretty cool. And yeah, we got 263. Um, so, as always, the challenge is open for people to attempt to beat this. Um, but no. I think I've met my match with most of these. Most of them are... You see the ones where it says nominal? These are the ones where I've provided a solution. Um, and you see a few of these in this bottom row, I like sequence sorter. I'm afraid to even try it. It's basically you have to build a stack of elements and keep track of um, where to insert the next value into this stack. Uh, or you have to implement bubble sort and just trust that at the end of all the sorting it'll work out just fine. But 
I think insertion sort's probably um, simpler instruction-wise. Um, or sim simpler com uh, conceptually to be able to code it and make sure that the end condition makes sense. Um, there's also ones like stored image decoder. Uh, let's say you got this. Um, you're going to read a length value from in, read a color value from in, draw a line of that length and color, wrapping when the end of the screen is reached. This is a. I assume this has got to be a common uh, signal processing or circuit sign sort of um, challenge for people doing more challenging sorts of circuits. This is actually quite difficult um, to write code for. Um, you have to take the values from in and then, um, okay, you're reading in a length and a color. Part of what makes this challenging is that each um, processing unit here each tessellated instruction set, I guess. I'm not sure what you call each one of these units. I forget. But each unit has only one memory address. And so you need to, the tricky part is that you need to remember um, the color as well as the length, as well as the XY position that you're currently at. Um, and while there are circuits that can keep track of all these sorts of things, um, and while those circuits typically wouldn't have um, items that have more than one memory register, items being like components, um, I don't know, this sort of stuff is really advanced. So I mean, I can hit run, and it just sits there. And it says 36 is the next length, and then 2 is the next color, and so forth. But um, you have to translate this into x, y positions as well as lengths. Um, so what you got to do is take this input, 36, take where you're at x, y's, I think. I think the language specifies, it, it asks you for a color and an x, y position and a length to draw. So you have to remember your current x position and then figure out what's the modulus of that versus the width of the display. And then break that up into how many, uh, what's the X length of each segment. And then combine that with your current X coordinate. Well, no, you don't combine that. You just remember what's your X coordinate when you're done drawing each segment. And also remember your Y position make sure you're able to pass through the colors that you want to print at each section. So in concept it makes sense that you want to just take this input, uh, figure out what's the width of the screen, and print uh, however many you got to print in each row. Often you'll have to break a 36 or a 26 or something into multiple segments and each time keep track of uh, what's your Y offset, your X offset. Because you don't want to draw over something you previously drew. So you have to keep track of like three values, your x, your y, and your length. You can just pass the color through, but um, yeah, the x and the y and the length are... It's demanding. Um, and in concept, I get what's going on, but in practice, it's a lot of coding effort. So I find this game too intimidating to progress with that at the moment. Um, but you guys could probably figure it out. There's solutions already posted in various forums. Um, so I'm not too excited by the possibility of coding this. Maybe I'll come back at a time where, um, I don't know, I just really want to see it done and go for a completion of the game. But in the meantime, um, I had succeeded at my goal far earlier than I had expected. So yeah. I am now number one in all of the puzzles I have attempted. Feel free to try to beat any of my records. Signal multiplier, it looks like I'm the only one to have tried. Um, 
Why don't I just show off what I did for signal multiplier here, which multiplies values. I like this. Jump relative to offset. Um, I forget exactly how this works, but um, it's still pretty cool. So this repeatedly adds values together in order to achieve multiplication. Um, move 10 into the accumulator, subtract up, jump relative to offset accumulator, and move minus 1 down over and over. I think the idea is that I would take a value, repeatedly add it to itself, or something to that effect. Oh, minus 1 is the thing I say to add again. And then 1 is my instruction to move on to the next iteration. So I was able to get a very efficient multiplication um, loop, if you will, by using minus 1 and 1 as commands uh, or parameters to determine what command to look up. Um, so then based on what commands looked up, we figure out what values to... Uh, <laughs> How to do our multiplication, as it were. Um, very cool. Also, it's really cool how some of these have a low idle time. I mean, ideally you'd have everything except one cell having a like 99% idle time, or ideally you'd pipeline the instructions so the data is transmitted exactly as needed. Holy moly, look at that. Somebody's done this in like 400 cycles. I mean, that's crazy. Now, I did this one here with uh, six nodes. Node is the noun to use for these. Um, do I have one that uses five nodes? Yes, I do. Okay, this is a dumber version of multiplication. I don't remember how this one works either. Maybe I could figure it out. No, this is too tricky. I don't remember how I did it. Um, regardless, the way I coded this makes it look like I could somehow um, decrease this to four units. Because all this node is doing is just moving upright. So I could like pipe that through the rightmost column if I needed to. Why did I not do it that way? Is there some dependency between the two? Um... Oh, never mind. This says jump relative to offset left. Um, wait. Now there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between um, things in the left column and things in the right column for this path. So I could pass everything through here, right? There's got to be a way. I was just lazy here, I suppose, when I said move value down. Yeah, each time I move to the right here, I also move down. Each time this moves something down. Yeah, this could certainly be rewritten to use four nodes. Um, I'm just afraid of breaking something. Is there a safe way I could do this? Let's see, can I just go back to the menu? Say signal multiplier copy. Instead of move upright. Um, this is instead of saying left, well, okay. How am I gonna do this? Move accumulator down. Here, let's say jump relative to up. Um, yeah, that's fine. Jump relative to offset left. Oh, that's what's going to make this trickier, isn't it? Um, if I'm adding in instructions, this jump relative to offset is going to do something different. Um, well, too late now. This. Thankfully, I'm operating on a copy of the original schematic, so if I break this, um, 
that's okay. Okay, so yeah, I'm apparently sending the same value to the right twice. Um, <laughs> so jump loop accumulator down move left down JRO left okay that's cool I think uh, it just means that these other things, which say minus two, are going to have to be a or minus one, or it's going to have to be a minus two. And then a no op was used to time between the two paths, but I don't think I need this anymore, other than to have something to uh, jump relative uh, to. Um, move one right. This is going to have to be move left down. Let's give it a shot. Nope. Complete failure. Complete, utter, and abject failure. Well, it was worth a try. Um, like, if I change this to minus one right twice, you'll see how badly this fails. Yeah, this. So, somehow, piping. My values through the right circuit here seems not to have helped at all. Um, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence between, like, when I was sending values down and to the right. Um, it should be minus two because we're going to now jump from uh, JRO left back to here. Um, I'm not sure why this isn't working. Is there some subtle timing nonsense that I can't account for? Because, yeah, every time we print out a value... I mean, what happens if I change this back to NOP for... Do nothing. Um, now, granted, that means that also here I can't have duplicated commands. Um, what happens if I do this? It's an infinite loop, right? Yeah. So, what gives? Add up, jump relative to offset up. It used to say add up, jump relative to offset left. Okay, what am I even doing by multiplying here? Take the input value, jump unconditionally, and jump based on the argument here, and then move left down move up into the accumulator. Oh. Well, the cardinality of these commands was different. Um, now let's go back. I could show you what was different here. Copy so the point is that even though it looks like for each loop I'm sending one value from up and one value from left, really this is necessary. This needs to be its own circuit um, because often this will just say move minus one. And um, what that means... Um, Wait, how does this work? 
Look, yes, I'm repeatedly sending column B down. Repeatedly sending the original A value to the right. It just seems like somehow this should be doable without this cell on the left here. Why do I need this? I don't get it. And like, I think I see from the diagram that somebody's done this with four. Um, I'm just curious how they did it. It's probably something that's less efficient than what I've done. So how does this work again? This, this is always jump back to loop. Loop says subtract one from the value of a, and then move minus one to the right and minus one down. Um, And I'm confused because the only values I'm sending to the right or down are uh, minus ones. Which just mean keep looping here as you're adding B to B to B to B to B and so forth. We're never transmitting A across the wire. That's fine. I'm just questioning. Um, Why didn't it work to send the command to the right instead of uh, down? Why can't I send everything right, um, but instead of minus one, make this minus two? Um, And then, since this is minus 2, accumulator down. I still don't understand the difference. And then this would be... I mean, this should just see... Just keep saying add up, add up, add up, add up over and over. There's nothing wrong with that. Move one right, eventually this will say. <sighs> Accumulator down, move left down, jump relative to offset left, no op. No op here is going to have to be replaced by move left down. So move one right says move jump down one instruction, and then this move one right says jump down one instruction. So this should work just fine. And yet it's like completely off. Do I have just an off by one error or something? So step. Okay. Yeah, I think I've got an off by one error. Or, like, the value in the accumulator is 8. We've already passed 8 down here, right? Haven't we? Move we'll accumulator down. Zero. Okay, so we reset the accumulator. Jump to loop. Jump relative to offset, should say. Jump back to loop. Add up. Let's try this again. So we got an 8 coming in on the right. Um, okay, minus 2 means move the accumulator value, which here is 8. We're going to move that down. Oh, but this says jump relative to offset up. Um, so I've got my inputs inverted here is the problem. So that I need the 
jump relative to offset command to be sent first, and then the value that's in the accumulator should be transmitted. Uh, something like that. Yeah. Nice. So we've achieved this in 1130 cycles. And, well, this one was 1389. By record, it was 1130. We've done it with four nodes uh, and 20 instructions. Can I code golf this a little bit? Um, this is an interesting way of sending multiple commands from one unit to another unit based on the state of this initial unit. This sort of pattern will serve me well later on for like that image processing um, puzzle. Um, but yeah, can I code golf this? I'm saying jump loop. It says JRO left. Do I really need jump loop? Well, no, it doesn't hurt me to have that there. Where's the idle parts of the circuit? This is never idle. This is, yes, this is idle. I don't care about that. This somehow between these two being not idle very often could pose some slowdown to um, my circuit. So, JRO left, and then this doesn't need to say move left down, because we already know um, in the case where, in fact, we don't necessarily need the commas there at all, but it doesn't hurt to have them. Um, but we know that we need to always move one down each time um, we're told to move on to the next instruction, which tells this to print out the value. Um, is there any way I could simplify this? Any way at all I could simplify this. I don't think so. This would be hard to simplify. Alright, so we've done this with 19 instructions, 4 nodes, still a lot of cycles, 13, 17. It would be kind of a miracle if I could break all 3 records with the same program. Um, usually you have to have more than one circuit or more than one program to be able to um, break a, all the records. So I'm just giving this a second more thought here, but likely I am finished with this puzzle. Just give you guys a second to appreciate this as well. I suppose I could animate it. Why not? Some thought might occur to me watching this. But yeah, those top two um, circuits or nodes are doing all the heavy lifting. This one here just resets the counter and does all the addition. That's pretty straightforward. It prints out the result when it's done. Um, I don't think. Oh, this one keeps track of how many times that this needs to multiply. Uh, perhaps more tricky things could be done over in this left column based on... <laughs> you could use jump relative to offset to say how many times we're going to multiply things, but that gets tricky. Um, you can do all kinds of tricky stuff, but it seems to be pretty damn efficient. Um... I mean, maybe some of the instructions to the right. Like, instead of saying jump relative to offset in this node, I could say jump greater than... No. 
Jump relative offset is the only one that takes a parameter that says which memory value to use, or which input to use. So, I could always, I mean, what I'd like to say is jump greater than equal to zero based on the value that came from the left. But that requires loading the value into the register and then jumping based on the value in the accumulator. Whereas the jump relative can look at a value that's in a different register, or in, I'm sorry, in a different input pipe. Um, also, this here could do something tricky if it detects that its input is a 0 or a 1. It could say, you know what, that's great and all that the thing on the left is, well, yeah, I'm sorry, no, it can't. Because uh, our cycle or our circuit on the left here isn't very bright. Yeah, if you want to do a more intelligent multiplication, you have to be aware of what both inputs are, and then use the minimum of those two inputs to figure out how many times you're going to loop. Um, unless you got some clever way of multiplying that doesn't involve um, traditional addition, which would be quite the feat. But anyway, yeah. Um, we've done good. Oh, good. I thought this program hung up there. See, that's signal multiplier. That was frustrating the first time I got it, but it's a lot better now. Anywho, um, that's Tessellated Instruction Set 100. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, certainly, this has been somewhat educational. Certainly, you probably have... well. I can't say certain you probably have questions, but you probably do have some questions about this game. I guess I'm open to try to answer them. Um, or maybe I'll just play other games more often if people aren't curious about this. I do intend to get to Shenzhen IO. I know it is kind of a goliath of a game, and so I'm just like mentally preparing to be in a optimal state to play that. Um, or like fully awake and alert and energetic and ready to answer everything and respond to everything immediately and I uh, just have to know when I'm in like peak physical mental condition to play that game but it is coming up um, interesting they're saying TIS net directory <laughs> apparently um, not sure what that button did I assume that there's online puzzles somewhere that it's downloading. That is fancy. Um. Wow. Okay. Well, this game might have more interesting challenges than the ones I already looked at. Um. That's pretty spiffy. Anyhow, uh, hope you enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll uh, see you next time.